The 2022 Tour de France Femmes is a monumentous step for cycling as a whole, and it brings some of the best riders into the public eye along with some very fancy bikes. Here is our pick of the nicest bikes in this year's race. So we finally have a women's Tour de France that goes some way to doing justice to the athletic abilities of the women's pro peloton. And while there is still some room for improvement regarding the duration of the race, we're happy for now that the biggest bike race in the world has a proper platform for women's racing. The Tour de France Femme also gives us a chance to have a look at some of the nicest bikes on the market. First up is one that really caught our eye on the morning of stage two. Lorena Weevils had just bossed the sprint up the Champs-Élysées on stage one, and her DSM mechanics got to work building her this stunning special edition gold Scott foil. I mean, just look at it. Team DSM is a setup that has both a men's team and a women's team, and the two squads use exactly the same equipment. So what we've got here is the top end Scott foil. This thing has only just been released and it focuses on being as aerodynamic as possible whilst being lightweight. The frame set has taken advantage of the UCI's more relaxed frame design rules and that's why you're seeing a collection of super deep tube shapes. The beautiful gold sparkly paint has been applied to the fork and head tube and runs back down the bike, transitioning down to jet black and bare carbon through the frame. Now, Team DSM is one of only a few Shimano officially sponsored teams, so it comes as no surprise to see a full Shimano Dura-Ace Di2 R9200 group set and wheel set. Let's start with the group set. Now, Shimano recently went to a bigger chainring size for all of their pro athletes. These are 54, 40 tooth chainrings, which are absolutely monstrous. And Weevils combines that with an 11 through to 30 tooth cassette at the back. Being a sprinter, the C60 wheel set is her choice. And this is a forward thinking team, so those are tubeless Vittoria Corsa tires. The front end of the bike is highly integrated and up front you'll find a Wahoo head unit. In terms of the bling factor, this bike is certainly leading the competition. Next up is the Ribble Endurance of Team Le Col Wahoo. Now this might not be the fanciest bike and you might not have been expecting us to pick it, but we absolutely love the paint job and we absolutely love the build. The Endurance is Ribble's do-it-all road race bike and you get a high level of integration here. This machine has already tasted success with the white jersey coming the way of the team from stage one. They also had the most aggressive rider for two stages on the trot, so the team has had plenty of podium time so far. But what about the bike? Let's take a closer look. Shimano Jura Ace is generally the professional's choice, but with budgets being a little bit tighter in some women's teams, what you'll find is that some teams choose to run Ultegra. It's a brilliant group set and it's perfect for you and I, but it can come with a slight weight penalty. Micah van der Dween's race bike is set up with a DI2 group set, though we have seen some of the riders using the Ultegra mechanical group set. Up at the front of the bike, the DI2 group set allows for very, very clean front end integration. As Le Col Wahoo are not a fully Shimano sponsored team, it does leave them able to chop and change some of their component choices. One area where you can see this is down at the brakes with Swiss Stop coming in to provide rotors and disc pads. Mavic provides the wheels and the team run tubeless Continental GP5000 TR tires. It's already been a very successful year for the team with Alice Towers taking the British National Road Championships at the age of just 19. So any success that they get in the Tour de France is going to be just an added bonus. With one of the nicest paint jobs in all of pro cycling, the Canyon Shram team of Cassian Iwadoma and Tiffany Cromwell will be looking to put their stamp on this race. These team bikes are some of the most sorted in the pro peloton and it all centers around a SRAM Red ETAP access group set. 
the wireless shifting not only provides very, very clean lines to the front end of the bike, it also allows the riders to have a massive spread of gears for both the flat stages and when the race moves towards the mountains. Sticking with the SRAM theme, we've got a set of ZIP 303 NSW wheels. This is a tubeless ready hookless design and so you will need corresponding tyres. Thankfully Schwalbe's Pro 1 tyres provide plenty of grip and low rolling resistance for the riders. Oh, and we forgot to mention, they absolutely look stunning with those tan sidewalls. These bikes actually have a few components that we don't see a lot of in the Pro Peloton anymore. Ergon provides the saddles and then it's over to Tyne for the pedals. These are a really lightweight design, but we just don't see them that much these days. Finishing this bike here is a set of sprinter shifters on the inside of the drops. We're not sure if these are the SRAM model or whether they are a Shimano Di2 shifter that's been custom fitted to the SRAM levers. We've already had three weeks of absolutely brilliant racing to watch this stunning paint job make its way around France. But thankfully the Cannondale Super 6 and System 6 bikes of EF Education Tibco SVB are exactly the same as the men's team. That means that Palace are back for another collaboration. And you won't be surprised to find that the kit is quite jazzy too. This is a very, very sorted build that centers around a Shimano Jura Ace Di2 12-speed R9200 group set. The EF Pro team isn't a Shimano sponsored team, however. So like some of the other teams that we've seen here today, they're free to go and choose some other components. FSA provides the power meter crank set and the internals of those power meters are made by power to max So with German engineering, you can bet your bottom dollar that they are going to be nice and accurate. And then it's over to Vision for the majority of the rest of the kit with Vittoria Corsa tires. Again, at the front end, the team has a full range of Vision Metron handlebars. So the riders can choose exactly what works for them. And one nice finishing touch to the front end is that they've got the Shimano Dura-A sprinter shifters on the inside of the drops. Pro Logo provides the finishing touches with bar tape and saddles. Now, Team Park Hotel Valkenburg might not be one that you've heard of before, but we really love their bikes. The team uses the Factor 02 VAM and it's special in one sense in that it's one of the only ones to be running rim brakes. This lightweight machine is one that we absolutely love the look of with the chrome lettering on the down tube accented by the top tube decals that match the kit. Like with the Rivel that we saw earlier, this bike isn't decked out in the latest and greatest kit. But what we have here is a really functional build that works just as well as the Jura Ace models. The group set is Shimano's Ultegra R8050. That basically means that it is running Di2 and rim brakes. The team uses Pioneer power meters and they have access to a collection of fast forward wheels. From what we've seen, the team looks to be using tubeless ready tires. These are the Schwalb Pro Ones. Factor's in-house component brand Black Ink provides the one piece bar stem. What do you think of rim brakes still being used in the Pro Peloton? Let us know in the comments below. Plenty of teams in the men's pro peloton come up with a brand new paint scheme for their Tour de France bikes. The FDJ Suez Futuroscope team is no different and their Lapierre bikes have been treated to this gorgeous finish. Now the FDJ setup is one of the Shimano sponsored teams so we've got the latest and greatest Jura Ace R9200 Di2 group set here. That means that the team gets the biggest chain rings on offer with 54 and 40 tooth up front. And then moving back towards the cassette, we've got an 11 through to 30 tooth option. That was certainly enough for Denmark's Cecile Utrup Ludwig, who absolutely decimated the finish of stage three. Her stage win in her national champs jersey was thoroughly deserved after losing so much time in the previous stage. The team has a range of Jura Ace wheels and this bike comes with the C50. It's a tubeless setup and the FDJ team uses the Continental Grand Prix 5000S TR tires. 
Up at the front end, there is an integrated one-piece bar and stem, and you'll find Pro Logos bar tape and saddle finishing the bike. The Specialized of the SD Works team is easily one of the nicest SL7 builds we've seen. The team has a gorgeous purple-pink custom design that fades and changes colour depending on how the light hits it. But thankfully this bike isn't just about the looks. Under a rider like Ashley Moorman Passio, it's got the potential to win the final stage and the overall race so definitely keep your eye on this bike. This SL7 is adorned with a SRAM Red ETAP Access group set. The riders use the inbuilt power meter from the crank set, and again, we have a set of Zips 303 Firecrest wheels. This is a tubeless setup, and the riders turn to the S-Works turbo tires. Specialized is once again used for the power saddles, and at the front of the bike, you'll find a Zip bar. The team is also wearing a special edition jersey for the race with the message Stay Strong Amy. That is in support of their teammate Amy Peters who is still recovering from an absolutely horrific injury. Right, which of these bikes is your favourite? Let us know down in the comments below. Did we miss your favourite bike? Tell us that too. If you like this sort of content then we've got loads of tech video from the Men's Tour de France so definitely check that out. Remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.